Jen, we have two 90-inch TVs behind us here, $10,000 for one of them, $5,000 for the other. Do you think we'll find differences? I'm sure we will, but one better be really, really good for two times the price. Let's find out. So on one side, we have the TCL R754 98-inch LED TV. Really nice. On the other side, we have the Sony 98-inch X90L. Both really awesome TVs, and I'm going to give important buying advice at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But let's get a good look at these giant TVs. Both are enormous, not just in the screen size, but the weight, the stands, everything is enormous. First, the feet on the TCL only go at the end, so you need a gigantic table to set this on. Our IKEA dual Besta frames that we use that everyone asks about work great, but you know, you couldn't fit a much bigger TV than this. The Sony feet go a little bit tighter, but they're even longer than the TCL, so in either case, a big stand is gonna be needed. And if you wanna wall mount either one of these TVs, prepare to buy a very big, strong mount. The Sony has a more standard 600 by 400 millimeter Visa mounting pattern, so you really just need to make sure that the mount can hold the massive 148 pounds. That is really huge. The TCL only weighs 131 pounds without the stand, but it has a very large and abnormal 850 by 400 millimeter Visa pattern. So anything over 800 millimeters makes it a little bit difficult to find a proper mount for this TCL. And I get asked about what mount would work all the time. So I'm going to tell you there's a certain style that I use this human centric full motion mount, which has 900 by 600 millimeter visa pattern max is what I would recommend. They're very strong mounts and they can hold the TV weight as long as you mount it properly. I've actually hung off this mount when it's attached to the wall. So as long as you do it correctly, it will hold either one of these TVs very well. The Sony has a couple of speakers on the side back and then also downward firing speakers. So you can connect to Sony soundbars and offer a very wide sound stage with a soundbar and the TV. It's pretty cool. The TCL does not have that sort of coordination, but it does have a nice sub in the back. So you get a little bit more bass out of the TCL. In either situation, a sound bar or a system is going to be a huge necessity if you're going to pair it with this gigantic 98 inch TV for the best home theater experience. But let's really talk about the most important reason you could buy one of these two TVs, which is sports. I'm kidding, but it's my main reason. So in comparing these two TVs, both are about as bright as they can get. The Sony seems to have a little bit better native contrast. However, it seems that the TCL can get a bit brighter with the SDR or standard dynamic range content. The Sony does seem to have a little bit better upscaling. I don't think that would probably surprise anyone. Sony is known for great processing, good upscaling, good motion, all these sorts of things. And the X90L is no different. Looks really good. But the TCL, it does fine in most instances. I really think that you wouldn't even notice. You probably couldn't tell which is which. But for the most part, if you have a really trained eye, you can see the Sony's a little bit better. But really, the TCL does just fine for the most part when it comes to upscaling and processing and motion and all that as well. So I'm pretty impressed. I think I have to give a slight edge to the Sony in SDR content because it has a little bit better contrast, because it has a little bit better processing. But again, the TCL is a little bit brighter, so very tough decision. But I think the most important point is that they're both enormous TVs and will look fantastic for watching sports. And since they both have Google TV, you're getting a lot of the same from the operating system. Tons of apps, great connectivity to your Google account and various backgrounds when the TV is idle. The Sony does have the Bravia Core, their own movie app. So that would be one benefit. Bravia Core can stream up to 80 megabits per second, which is two to four times more than Netflix and Disney Plus offer. And you get a really large IMAX catalog as well. And on the other hand, TCL has their own TCL channels app, which is really awesome, especially if you do not have cable because it's very expensive. Having free channels is really underrated. Once you start watching these sorts of channels, I can't stop. So with either one of the TVs, you have a nice bonus, whether it's the Bravia Core app or the TCL channels. And if you're a gamer, both of these gigantic TVs TVs come with four HDMI ports. Two of them on both TVs can do 4K at 120 frames per second. That's kind of like the new standard of like minimal acceptability that you have two ports that have 4K at 120. A lot of people would like to see four ports, but one of the HDMI 2.1 ports is actually used for the eARC. So you can connect a soundbar speaker system and game 4K at 120 on one device or have no soundbar system or whatever and connect with two devices. Of course, you still have two more HDMI ports that can game 4K 60. So I don't think it's a really big deal to me that only two of them are 4K 120. 
120. Overall gameplay is great on either TV. The size of the TV is definitely the best feature. Both are bright and therefore big and bright equal fun, right? I feel the TCL is slightly lower input lag and that's not a big surprise. I feel like Sony has never been the quickest gaming TV, but Sony does have the new game bar, which can tell you your frame rate and your VRR and HDR, which features are on and off. And I think that's a pretty cool addition. The TCL does not have the game bar for this TV, but we've been using this for over a year and had a lot of fun gaming on this 98 inch as well. So I think both TVs are gonna give you a great gaming experience just because of the sheer size of the TV, along with pretty decent gaming features. And I think that if sports or gaming are not your bag, then you must be considering one of these two TVs for watching movies. I've watched movies on both of them and I'm pretty impressed. To a degree, they look very similar. Both look great, but they're not the absolute brightest LED TVs I've ever seen. I think if one of them were mini LED, it would have a bigger advantage and stay tuned because the 98 inch QM8 from TCL is soon to drop. But both of these TVs have great picture. They have pretty bright highlights. They do a pretty good job with the darker scenes, but let's face it, they're not OLED TVs. And with under 200 dimming zones, and I think under 100 for the Sony, you can't really have OLED black levels with great highlights in every scene. But even though the Sony seems to have less dimming zones, it still has a little bit better native contrast again with these scenes. And it also looks a little bit brighter in HDR, even though it did in an SDR. I do think the Sony processing is a little bit better than the TCL and the motion might be slightly better as well. I feel like you can tweak the settings for either TV to have more or less of the motion smoothing that people either love or hate. So that doesn't seem to be a big issue. And again, they both seem very similar for watching movies gigantic screen, immersive, pretty solid overall quality. So before I give you guys the buying advice, I wanna dig a little deeper into the test that we did very quickly. One thing that I did notice on the Sony that's a little bit better than the TCL is off angle viewing. So if you have a wide seating area, you can see that the Sony looks a little bit better. It retains color better and it looks just a little bit better in general from an angle. And if you go off angle on the TCL, you lose a lot more color. So if you're gonna have a very wide room for this giant TV, which a lot of you may have, it's something to think about because the TCL sort of loses its picture quality as you get wider off angle. And the same thing goes for blooming. So we do these blooming tests to see if, you know, the LED TV can handle a, a very bright area next to a very black area and sometimes off angle that looks different. So straight on, both of these TVs look really good with regards to the blooming. I didn't really notice much blooming in any sort of content. Again, the contrast looks a little better on the Sony, but if you go off angle, you can see that neither one of them are fantastic for this sort of thing. It does seem like the Sony might be a little bit worse off angle and in these darker scenes, you know, these darker, you know, test patterns at least uh, that can translate into, you know, real world situations. Again, I feel like the Sony keeps its color better though from an angle. So I think that sort of makes up for it. I would just keep in mind that if you have a really wide area or if you're going to be sitting off angle, some of these things can affect the picture quality and it's something to think about. Another test that we did really quickly is the dirty screen effect test, which is looking for issues with uniformity on the panels. Now, they could be better. I would love to see very minimal amounts of dirty screen effect on any TV, but both of them seemed pretty acceptable. I didn't notice too many irregularities with either of these TVs, and I think it would be acceptable. The only time it really shows up is if you're watching something like hockey or sports or gaming where you're moving fast left and right, and sometimes those little dirty area patches remain on the screen. But again, I think both TVs are acceptable, so let's move to the last, which is the reflection test. And what you're looking for here is a combination of a bright TV along with good anti-reflective capabilities in order to make it so your room with a lot of windows doesn't distract you from watching the TV. And I think both of these do a decent job. It's not the most aggressive anti-reflective properties that I've ever seen, but it's a good combination of knocking down the reflections without being too distracting. Both are very similar. The X90L traditionally has a more matte-like finish, but this seems a little bit more like the X95L or X95K, where it's a little bit of a rainbow effect across the screen. It's probably a little bit harder for you to see it on screen. So the Sony is sort of in between a couple of the models, and I think the TCL matches it, 
Both of them are bright enough to overcome the reflections as well. So if you're in a dark room, you're good to go. If you're in a brighter room, I think the brightness level of the TV in combination with these anti-reflective properties is good to go. So now we get to buying advice and I've had the TCL here for longer, even though I loved the 83 inch Sony A90J OLED that I had here previously. The size is what stands out and why we kept the 98 inch in this room. So I'd be very happy to have either one of these TVs. But we asked, is one worth 2X the price of the other? And and the answer is probably no. The Sony is $10,000 at the time of recording this video, and I think the TCL provides most of what the Sony offers for half the price. The TCL is great for all content. It's a massive TV for watching movies, gaming, and sports, and it's way less expensive. You also get the TCL channels, but you don't get the Sony Bravia core. But is that picture quality loss from an angle and maybe the slightly worse processing on the TCL warrant buying a TV that's 2X the price? That's hard to say, but I think I think a lot of people that like Sony are used to a level of quality and they probably say, yes, I'll buy the Sony because I'm used to it with that upscaling, with the processing. But we can further that with two points. One, the Sony's definitely gonna come down in price. I would look to that toward Black Friday, the holiday. This is the first 98 inch from Sony that doesn't need like a custom installation. So I think this will be more readily available. So if you're looking to buy this 98 inch, I'd say, hold on a bit, you know, try to find it at a little better price or buy it now and just enjoy it for what it's worth. And second, Secondly, TCL is coming out with a new mini LED version of a 98 inch, the QM8. So $5,000 for this TCL is great. It used to be 8,500, or you can wait for the mini LED version to come out in a few months, which is gonna come out at the same price as the Sony X90L around $10,000. And of course, that will probably get lower as the time goes on as well. So you have a lot of good options. You can go with the tried and true Sony LED. If you're a Sony fan, you can get a discount by buying a TCL 98 inch right now. You can look for their new QM8 that's gonna be coming out later in the summer or fall. Or you know there's a couple other options Options too. You still have the LG G297 inch, which is about $25,000. Yikes, that's expensive. You also have a couple of Samsungs. I think their QN90A is around $10,000 or so. But you also have the new Q80C, which is actually down to $6,900 right now. So let me know in the comments if you want me to review that or if you have any other questions or concerns. Also, make sure you go to betheinstaller.com and take the TV quiz if you're unsure which TV to buy. Go through the questions. It'll spit out a couple of options that are great for you and watch a couple of these videos here. We got some cool unboxing of 98 inch TVs. See you in the next one.